Welcome to ReFilm Recap. Today I will show you a drama fantasy, sci-fi film from 2020 titled The Midnight Sky. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. Augustine, an aging man with a terminal illness, is left behind at an observatory on Earth to keep track of ventures by astronauts to find another planet capable of sustaining human life, while everyone else on the island is evacuated. He lives alone in the observatory, sleeping, drinking, and taking his meals by himself. He gives himself blood transfusions and takes medication throughout the day. Decades earlier, Augustine was giving lectures to hundreds about the planets in the universe that could potentially support life, such as K-23. During the after-party a woman approaches him to flirt. They have a few drinks together and she questions him about the validity of the book he just published about K-23. Augustine wakes up in the present day and starts looking through the computer to see which missions are still active. Most of them are inactive, but one does catch his eye. Ether seems to be the last mission remaining and Augustine looks through the photos of the crew. He spots a picture of a woman he recognizes, and decides to try to start contacting them. Sully, the woman in the photo, is part of a five-person crew on Ether, and she is in charge of communication. She has a nightmare about being stranded on K-23. She's pregnant and has a jovial relationship with the rest of the crew, especially Captain Ade, the father of her child. When Sully gets to her operating room, she receives an odd signal that she can't place and alerts the rest of the crew. Back on Earth, Augustine goes about his usual routine until a fire alarm starts going off in the observatory. He tracks it back to the kitchen where he extinguishes it and collapses on the floor in exhaustion. From his new vantage point, he sees a little girl crouching under the sink. He is horrified that she has been left behind. Augustine desperately tries to get in touch with someone on the radio to report the little girl, but he is unable to contact anyone. Augustine finds where the little girl has been sleeping in one of the storage units and tries to explain to her that he is not going to be able to take care of her, but she seems unable or unwilling to speak. Augustine makes the little girl dinner and afterwards she draws him a picture of a flower, an iris, and he realizes she's trying to tell him that's her name. Augustine again tries to make contact with Ether but is still unable. Iris tries to sleep with him in his room, but Augustine sets her up in a neighboring room. In the middle of the night, she comes back to Augustine's room and makes herself a little nest in the corner and sleeps on the floor. Ether has also been having problems with communication. They haven't been able to get in touch with any other ships or anyone on Earth. They are returning from their expedition on K-23 with the finding that the planet can sustain human life. Iris watches Augustine do his blood transfusions and lays down in the chair next to his to look up through the roof of the observatory and watch the stars above them. Decades earlier, a young Augustine is working in his study when the same woman from the party scolds him about not answering her calls. She is unsatisfied with his excuse of having been working, and lies to him about calling to tell him she isn't pregnant after all. She tells him that he's so consumed with his work that he's wasting his life and neglecting the people that care about him. Present day Augustine goes outside to check on the antenna and control of his communications and finds dozens of fallen, dying birds in the snow. He recognizes this as a sign that the bad air has already reached the observatory far sooner than it was supposed to. He realizes that the antenna that they have at the observatory isn't strong enough to contact Ether, but the one at Lake Hazen, previously a weather station, is strong enough. He tells Iris that they've got to make their way to Lake Hazen not only to get away from the encroaching bad air, but as their only hope of contacting Ether before it's too late. Augustine outfits himself in several layers of heavy clothing and does the same for Iris, providing her with goggles and a breathing apparatus that he tells her to never take off for any reason. They pack up what they need most from the observatory and load it onto a jet ski. They take off from the observatory and head into the snowy tundra towards Lake Hazen. On Ether, the crew occupies their time by participating in holograms of their loved ones, or playing three-dimensional video games and playing cards with each other. An alarm sounds, disrupting the peace, and alerting the crew that their ship has drifted off course. They're able to determine their exact location and a route back to Earth by using the signal coming from K-23, but in order to get back home, their new route will take them through uncharted territory. Augustine and Iris spend that night in a tent in the snow. During their travels the next day they spot the ruins of a wrecked plane. Once Augustine sees a dead boy in one of the seats outside, he tells Iris to stay put while he checks out the rest of the wreckage. Inside he mostly finds debris, but as he starts to make his way back out, a dying man grabs his foot. The man is badly wounded and begs Augustine to save him. Outside, Iris's curiosity gets the best of her and she takes a peek at the body. She gets startled and goes to be with Augustine in the rest of the plane, but he shoes her back outside. Augustine shoots the man on the plane as he had asked him to do, putting him out of his misery. 
Augustine has a flashback of watching the woman from the party leave him, taking their daughter, who he had never had the opportunity to meet. On ether, Maya does an ultrasound of Sully's pregnant belly and tells her that she's going to be having a girl. She informs the rest of the crew and they immediately start trying to cook up names. While traveling on the jet ski, Iris spots a bunker in the distance and they make their way to it. Augustine checks it out and decides it will be a good place to stay overnight. He sets out their equipment and leaves the jet ski outside. Austin watches Iris draw a picture of a woman, and he says he recognizes her. He tells Iris all the wonderful things he remembers about her, and Iris speaks for the first time, asking him if he loved her. That night, the bunker begins to flood as it sinks into the melting ice. Augustine gets Iris out of the bunker and tells her to run while he tries to gather as much of their stuff as possible. He escapes the bunker just in time and tries to ride away on the jet ski, but it sinks under the ice. He tries to swim after it, but it sinks too fast and he almost runs out of air. He climbs back out of the ice and gets warmed up with Iris. They will be forced to make the rest of their journey to Lake Hazen on foot and with no supplies. Later on, Augustine gives Iris the last of their food. She seems worried but he reassures her that there will be plenty to eat at Lake Hazen. They make their way on foot through a snowstorm, barely able to see two feet in front of them. Through the snow, Augustine sees wolves circling them, and he shoots at them with his shotgun. In the chaos, he loses track of Iris, and he calls for her but she doesn't speak. After searching for a while, he gives up and lays down in the snow. He sees a vision of the woman from the party standing over him, and eventually realizes that it's Iris. He takes her into his arms, grateful to have found her. The next day, they successfully arrive at Lake Hazen and immediately set to work trying to contact Ether. Sully is able to get Augustine's signal and responds. Sully tells him that they haven't been able to get a hold of NASA and asks him what's happened to Earth. As he tries to explain, their signal gets scrambled and Sully is unable to understand him. She loses the signal and an alarm starts blaring. Ether is now traveling through the uncharted section of their route and the ship is being pelted with asteroids. Serious damage is done to the ship, and their communication equipment is completely destroyed. The crew assesses the damage done to the ship and decide they will have to rebuild part of their communication systems and go outside the ship to repair it. Maya, Sully, and Ade will be taking the walk, this being Maya's first time ever leaving the ship while being in space. Maya is extremely nervous, and throws up several times before they step outside. Once outside the ship, everything appears to be going fine. They make the necessary repairs to the communication system and begin making their way back inside. Before they can make it, the ship is again assaulted by asteroids. Once they subside, the crew makes sure everyone is okay. Maya is shaken up but ultimately fine, but as she makes her way back inside, she notices droplets of blood floating up from her suit and into her helmet. Ade and Sully rush her back inside the ship and Mitchell makes his way to them with the med kit. They take Maya's helmet off and as soon as they do, a large amount of blood floats out of her suit and into the ship. Maya starts to panic, saying there's too much blood, and Ade and Mitchell work to repair her wounds while Sully tries to keep Maya calm. Despite their best efforts, the crew is unable to close the wound made by debris from the ship being hit by the asteroids, and Maya dies. The crew mourns their loss, but are soon distracted when they catch their first glimpse of Earth. They are horrified to see that it looks lifeless and covered in radiation. Ether gets back in contact with Augustine and he explains that they won't be able to land back on Earth. He tells them that he's the only one left and that everyone else has been evacuated. He tells them that there are no other active missions, and they are the only one left. The crew is devastated that they won't be able to return home and that their only option for leaving the ship is to turn around and make their way back to K-23. Tom makes it clear that he isn't going back to K-23 and that he has to find out what happened to his family. He asks Ade for permission to take one of the re-entry pods back to Earth so he can try to find his wife and kids, and Ade allows him. As Tom prepares for his journey back to Earth, Mitchell tells him about his daughter that died at four years old, and how she would have been the same age as Maya if she were still alive. Mitchell asks if he can go back to Earth with Tom so he can return Maya's body, and Tom agrees. Mitchell and Tom say goodbye to Sully and Ade and take the re-entry pod back to Earth. Sully reaches out to Augustine to update him on what has happened with everyone in the crew and that they plan to return to K-23. Sully tells Augustine that she's always been a big fan of his work and is disappointed that she'll never get to meet him. He asks her for her name and she tells him her name is Iris. Augustine asks her to describe K-23 to him and as she does, he decides not to tell her that he is her father that she never met. The little girl Iris that Augustine was seeing was a hallucination all along. Ether enters a communication blackout zone and they lose the signal. 
Ade and Sully are the last people left and they make their way back to K-23 to potentially rebuild the civilization. The End